This is the eighth round. Very nice score for especially for the rating that I have. It's like twenty two thirty three, which is was well, now it's twenty two thirty three. But it's that's, that's pretty low, basically. Especially, I mean, even for me, I just feel like that's really low. So twenty two is like you know, it's pretty. It's pretty good. It got me second place for the the cat the uh, prize for under twenty four or whatever it was. But it's pretty good, pretty good, right? So four. Are you recording? Are you recording this time, Mister Canty? I am. I am crazy loca. I am recording. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I am. But now, um, so round eight, round eight of the Chicago Open. I'm playing Keaton Kiera. He's like, um, he's a uh, pro chess league player. And I played him before. I didn't even remember until I was like, oh, yeah, I have played him before. He's an international master, by the way. I'm in round eight. I got four points out of eight. And I'm feeling good going into this round after beating, winning three in a row and then one draw with the FIDE master. So beat the FIDE master. Well, beat the 2200, 2100. Beat of FM, drew an FM. Now I'm playing an IM. So I'm turned. I'm like, let's go. Like I got the white pieces. It's about to go down. The lightsaber is about to hit him right now. So we get on the board. We play. Don't forget to check out James' YouTube to see an analysis of every round and new content to come. That's right. Braden is my editor, actually. So make sure you guys go follow Braden's YouTube channel. That should be in the chat, actually. Here I play for the San Diego Surfers. Yes, that's what I wanted to bring up. Liam Chess. Yes, that's what I wanted to bring up. He actually plays... Um, for the San Diego Surfers, I think he's the man. I think he's a manager now of the San Diego Surfers or something like that. I checked it, but I was like, "Wow, pro chess league player playing him in the actual tournament!" Like that was so cool to see and play him. So, um, but we, we're playing in this game. I get the white pieces. I'm feeling comfortable because I just I have the white pieces. I don't have to play as super hard. You do, but at the same time, it's easier to play white, especially in the open section, and then you do playing with the black pieces in the open section. So. I'm um, playing this game, and here we go, okay? This is a crucial game. I'm like, I have to win or get a draw here. So I'm like in norm territory, or at least make you feel like it, because I was, right? So E4, here we go. E4 on the board. You know I always play with the white pieces. I play E4 when I do every single time. E4, here we go. So C5 is on the board. Now, chat, what move did I make next? What move did I make next? In this position, e4, c5. This is a hard one. This is a hard one. Being like Tyrion says, c3 is life. C3 is life. A3 says relative impact. D4 says Gary Fang. E4. Wow. D4 from Adam Will. Okay. Test by test. Best by test says Matt Smith. That's right. King e2. Okay, that's nice right there. That's nice. That was a, that's close. King e2 is very close. Bishop c4, d4. Anything but knight f3. Smith Moore, double X clam, chess tricks in the building. What's up, chess tricks? It's C3. My favorite of all time. Queen H5, attack C5. Ooh, monstrous move. Look at that. Brayden with the creativity here. Queen H5. X clam. X clam, right? So I play C3. My favorite stuff. C3 Sicilian. Here we go. So I'm already happy. I'm already happy. He plays knight f6. I go e5. Regular theory here, knight d5. I hit him with d4. Ready for the trade. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. I go up. He goes d6. d6. This is still theory here. Knight f3. And then he goes knight c6. It's regular stuff. Just develop, right? I play knight c3. Now, at this point, I've already looked at about, man, 20, 30 games in, in, in different positions. So maybe total about 40 to 50 games in this position is white. Is if they take first or if, they, if knight takes c3. So actually, guys, what would you play in the chat with the black pieces here? Is black to move? I've just played knight c3. What do you play as black here? We had a game in this in Drew. That's right. Liam Chess says d takes c5. Lost all of them chess tricks. <laughs> yeah, they strong. Of course. That's good stuff, though. That's good. You want to keep playing in those arena kings. You get to play those boys then. But I held for 40 moves. Yo, that's good. That's good stuff. So a lot of times people, Bishop e6 says uh, heat miser. Bishop e6 is actually a move from Tau, not in this particular position, but actually speaking of Bishop e6, pawn takes, pawn takes, Bishop e6, this is played by Tau and Sveshnikov, Sveshnikov, can't remember what year, but a game with uh, Sveshnikov playing the white pieces, that's who I played a C3 Sicilian by, this, the expert in the C3 Sicilian is Evgeny Sveshnikov, but Bishop e6 was Tau's move, and that's followed by Queen a4 by uh, Evgeny Sveshnikov in that game, right, so... After this, we go back. 
knight c3 and then de5 so here's the problem with knight c3 de5 knight here takes pawn takes I, I go d5 and it gets very scary here you know how many people i have beaten with this chess tricks you included because you've played this before knight a5 here bishop b5 check bishop d7 white to move and win two moves game over oh my goodness what just happened send a stretcher that's not a move white to move what do you do here what do you do here knight a5 they like to go knight a5 a lot of times because they don't want to go back to b8 which is understandable you don't want to go back to b8 so they go knight a5 thinking it is good yeah i remember now he says <laughs> adam will says queen a4 that's tricks is like i remember this big fella queen a4 steros p09 says queen a4 queen a4 from heat miser that is unanimous queen a4 i'm hitting two pieces at the same time in a way because both of these need to be defended the queen defends both of these this is overload that's the theme here the knight can't go anywhere and now we have b6 b6 defends this white to move what is the move what is the move first one in the chat there it is and then gary fang already put it up 95 An opening trap i've fallen for at least 10 times now i've changed the line correct and when you change the line the jedi does the same so we got some new stuff for everyone but knight takes c5 and that's it gg game over Send a stretcher it's a wrap just start a new one like reset the pieces let's let's make this easy that's exactly how it happens and actually actually for people in the chat you want to see what happens after knight takes c5 Knight takes c5, why is this so bad? Because there's so much pressure on d7. And it's very, very tough to do anything here. If bishop takes b5, that's devastating. Mating a few. Knight c6, of course, only pro prolongs it for a move. And then queen takes d7 is checkmate on the board. On the board there. Pretty, pretty. Focus rooks have, have a knight card. Yeah, it's tough stuff here. So um, knight a5 doesn't work. And then actually, I'll show you another one. They actually played knight b8. Knight b8, I go bishop b5 check. They actually go knight d7. Okay. I take on e5. They go a6. Why to move? What do you do now? This is ridiculous. I've done this on the board many times. And actually, um, online, it's so fun to be able to do this. It is so fun. Why to move? What do you do? Queen a4 from Sturros. Queen a4. Queen a4. Again, queen a4. Everyone's like, queen a4. Queen a4. Anyone else? Queen a4. Knight takes f7, says Retz. Wait, no. Queen a4 doesn't work. It does not, guys. It does not. It does not. So I'm going to go here first. a4 for sure. He can... Nope. Queen a, queen a4 is not the move. Chess trick says queen f3. That is correct. Queen f3. What I did before... And if this is the thing. And I always tell my students this too. Try reversing the move order. If you go queen h5... Oh, yeah. He just hits g6. And then queen f3. I'm hitting this. Oh, he, he goes f6. Oh man, well now I'm not, I, I just gotta like trade everything down. But if I reverse it and go queen f3 first, reverse in the move order, boom. It ha he has to push this first because the knight can't go here because it's pinned. Then I hit him with queen h5. Uh oh, big fella, you in trouble. g6, knight takes g6. If you take this, that's mate on the spot. And if he does not take it, I've, I've had, uh, what happens? Knight takes, they usually move the queen here. So queen a5. Now, I have had this position a lot of times. And I've learned something that I did not know was here before until actually I start looking at my games and start analyzing my own games. And I'm like, I, this always, this has been here. I didn't even know white to move. What do you do now? What do you do now? It's just, it's pretty simple. You winning, but like, how do you finish it now? Chess player says an exchange, meaning knight takes rook. Chess trick says knight at 496 mate. Castle says Brayden. I saw you did it once. Yeah, Chestrix is correct. He's right. He saw me do it once before. Bishop d7 and castle. It's actually knight f4 check. This is forced. Queen hits here. King d8, knight e6. Oh my goodness. Mate on the board. I saw the engine do this after I was analyzing my games. I'm like, wow. Because I would always take this. Because it's like, I'm taking a full rook. I'm up everything. This is over. But knight f4, knight e6 is, oh my goodness. Don't, why'd you do that man like that? You know, he, what if he, does he have a family? Under, do you understand? You know, it's ridiculous. So, thanks for the follow, Thunder Mullet. Appreciate it. So pretty. It's very nice, right? Knight f4, knight e6 is beautiful. Beautiful with the mate on the board. So, that's that's my c3 Sicilian. I love it. I love it, right? There's so many other things you can do. But he went for none of this. And even in the chat, even in the pro chess league game that me and, and my opponent here, 
We played a, we played before in a pro chess league, and this game ended in a draw with the white pieces. Same thing. So this game ended in a draw too, but I'm going to show you what happened here. Pawn takes, pawn takes. This is the draw line in a way. Queen takes, takes, pawn takes. Now look at this position. Look at this position. I want you to, I want you to, to say, you know, who would you be, white or black, and why? Like, what's going on in this position? When I first played this as white, I'll tell you a little bit of story here. When I first played white in this position, I got here by almost like, not accident, but I was like, let me just try it. You know, trying out the C3 Sicilian. And I was not a fan of this. I didn't know what the plans were. I'm like, man, this feels like I'm losing in a way, blah, blah, blah. But once I started looking at games and doing research and stuff, I actually started to be more comfortable with this position as white. Well. It's tough. White has some space, but the queen side pawn structure is suspect. Okay. Okay. White is closer to castling. Chess trick says black, maybe. A lot of things. A lot of things. I believe all of that. I believe all of that. White, actually. White, with, with white, you have, I have um, space, basically, right? Like you said, I have space. I have an open file. I have two bishops ready to go already. This pawn is, uh, is advanced, but it, it will need some support. This is easy to defend. Easy to defend. And, you know, on the other hand, black has really no weaknesses, but all his pieces are on the back rank, which means he's just usually slightly, slightly um, behind on development. So if I can get a good position and use what I have, that's a good tip to use. Use what you have. I'm going to have a pretty good game anyway. Isn't black pretty safe here? Yeah, black is pretty safe, but also white is is safe too. This is kind of double-edged. White is further developed, says Matt Smith. I believe that, 100%. So G6 is played. G6 is played. And after this G6 move, this is standard. By the way, I looked at these games um, from Evgeny Sveshnikov, my favorite, by the way. If you want this book, you want to learn on C3 Sicilian, here we go right here. I have recommendations right under the video, but this one right here is the key to life in a C3 Sicilian. You do need to get this book, but I've learned from Evgeny Sveshnikov, and I saw some of his games back in 06, 2006, and some other ones um, earlier than 06, where he played the white pieces here, and in this position, it becomes very drawish, very easy, but very drawish, but white has usually the better end of the draw, which is kind of weird, and I'll show you how that works here. So G6, we have knight d4 on the board. Got to be a good player to get an opening name after you, says Z Nation, right? That's right. So bishop to G7. And the thing for knight d4, when I go here, I have so many other moves. I can play bishop e3. I can play bishop f4, bishop d3. I can, I've, I've tried actually everything myself, honestly, just not knowing until I actually researched it and figured out what I need to be doing as opposed to what I want to be doing or not know what to actually do in this position. If you don't know what to do, this is going to be a tough position to play as white because there's so many moves that you can make and so many ways that you can go right, but also so many ways you can go wrong. So rook b1 kind of stuff, you know, do I put the bishop on b5? Do I put it on c4? Do I put, what, what do I do? What's the what's my plan? Or are you just really moving pieces, right? So after I looked at some um, experience here in this position, I did Evgeny Shvesnikov always usually plays, puts the knight on d4 so he can play f4 very quickly and defend this pawn. Put the bishops on d3 and e3, bring the king to d2, and have the rooks take over the files here. I already know what the plan is, so it's very simple to play this, and that's exactly what happened. I was also up a lot of time in this game because I knew what to do. I just knew what to do based off of the games that I knew in the previous years from Ebony. So knight d4, bishop g7, I play f4. I do this usually, usually in the games a lot of times. And when you have a pawn structure like this, you want to break it up. So I figured f6 is coming. That, that's actually what I saw in the game as well um f6 and then you, you end up you know capturing playing bishop e3 bishop d3 still king d2 and stuff like that so we'll look at it aren't there g g5 ideas from black 2 maybe not in this line maybe not in this line braden just because it's um it's, it's quite open for white and also g3 it's gonna be fine you know yeah g3 is gonna be fine as a general rule is casting no longer a priority when queens are off uh, that's not a general rule, but it is, it's close to one, Pete Miser, I would say that, it's close, it depends on the position still, like, if it's a battlefield in the center with pieces, you probably don't want your king in the middle of that, but more of, more like this position, the queens are off, we don't even know where the pieces really are, basically, for both sides, so, it's okay not to castle here, it's okay not to castle, you know, the chances do go up of you not castling, though, when you do trade queens, so F4, F6, Pawn takes, bishop takes. 
And f6, he, you know, he, he broke it up immediately. And I just developed. I just got off the way. Bishop e3, develop everything. I'm good to go. Everything is nice and solid. I'm doing exactly what Evgeny Shvestnikov did in his games. Bishop d3, king d2, and just get out the way. And just, like, sit around and chill. So, bishop d7, bishop d3, because you have to get the pieces out anyway. And I know where they need to go. You play rook c8, of course. And this is why you play king d2. Why not castle? Why not do this? Why not play rook c1? Because my king is going to be fine on d2. King d2 is fine. The pieces block everything. It's not like he can ever dislodge my knight, which he actually can't, um, without taking it with a piece of his own and then me, me doing the same thing. I also have open files. I'm the first one to some of these files. Um, yeah, he gets this file, but it's, um, I got king d2. I'm quite fine here. So it's kind of tactical, actually, and it's, it's up my alley. I like these kind of games. So king d2, knight e6 was played. Very interesting move. I thought I was like, oh, man, he got this move coming in. He is threatening to take this, but not really. And I was like, I don't know. What, what should I really do here? Knight e6. So what do you think I play here? What do you think I play here? What would you play with the white pieces here? Not the easiest position to play. It's the international master. Very strong. Don't slip up. Don't even think like you're going to slip up. What do you play here is white? Not an easy move to make. Maybe it is. Oh, what it was here. Take care of the knights. E6. Bishop E4 is on the board. We have rook to B1. I'm assuming the A rook. Rook B1. Everyone's saying rook B1. A lot of rook B1s in the building. Okay, rook B1s everywhere. Rook B1s. So rook B1s are nice. Rook H to C1. Okay, nice job. Gary has the right idea, wrong rook though. And rook b1, rook b1 is definitely a move. King c1, unintentional sacrifice. Z Nation would just is just trying to jump right off the deep end of the boat. And that's okay. That's all right. You know, it's gonna be fine. We we still love you. But rook a to c1 is the move that I made, actually. Instead of rook b1, rook b1 is just simple. I mean, he's gonna play b6 anyway. I'm not a fan. It's not like I, I just have to sit here, you know. So this is not a realistic move. I always like to ask, is this realistic? So Rook A to C1 is very realistic. And what the thing about it is, is I'm anticipating Knight C5. I know that he's going to put this Knight on C5. And when this Knight gets to C5, I don't want to go Bishop C2 and just sit here. That's not a good square for my Bishop to be on. I'm, my Rook is like, it, it's not a good square. So I'd rather have my Bishop tucked here and being able to be opened up later on with an F5 move later. And if he ever moves his knight from c5, I can reposition his bishop if I need to. So I play rook a to c1, put some protection here. He follows up with knight c5. Immediately, I go bishop b1. This is still fast moving here. He castles. And I thought a long time here. I thought, why rook? I have heard a hard time. Why a rook? I have a hard time choosing rook sometimes. It just depends. Like, and actually, that's a great question. Going back, it really just depends on the position. Uh, on which rook to choose here because i could have chosen my h rook but honestly i didn't choose the h rook because it my rook this rook is has nothing to do over here it has nothing to do so i want to you at least you know i always like to put my pieces where the action is and if you think ahead of if you think ahead which you should be in chess thinking ahead when he castles and stuff i want to be able to be able to maybe play f5 one day maybe play g4 g5 Maybe in a perfect world, play h4 and h5 because this bishop's over here. Maybe try to open this file up and use the rook. So I want to have this rook close over here instead of being this one just kind of chilling. So I can use these, this a rook instead. A rook. Top GMs have the same problem. <laughs> You're going to want the h rook here for something. F file. Correct. Correct. Tyrion is 100% correct. Stuff on the f file. And that's actually what I did as well. Why not e6, a7? e6 and a7. Oh, knight takes e6 and bishop takes a7. Well, c3 is hanging. Oh, there you go. Somebody answered. Thanks, <laughs> nation. Yes, c3 is hanging. And that's why I did this, rook a to c1, because I'm actually setting that up now. So now I'm setting that up. So after rook a to c1, he plays knight c5. So now he's actually blocking that threat. And I mean, uh, completely do, like, removing knight, knight takes e6. So I put the bishop on b1. Bishop on b1, he gets out of the way with the castle. I play rook h to f1 because I want to be ready for everything. I thought about g3, but then again, I was like, well, I got to move this rook anyway, you know, so let's just let's just get active with this rook. Maybe it can even help me with this f5 push too. So I'll play rook h to f1. Rook h to f1, he follows up with e5. e5 immediately, g3 is a weenie move. Yeah, it's like a, a uh, it's like a eh, move. 
you know, that's what it is. Like G3, yeah. Rook H, oh, Rook H to F1, that's good. That's good. That's a good move, Rook H to F1. So Rook H to F1 and then E5 was played, immediately breaking up the center. At this point, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling real good because after pawn takes, bishop takes, it's an open game. It's an open game. I can call the shots. There are tactics. This could be a loose piece. There's so many things that can happen here. Focus bishop. It's right. It's right. So, you know, it's pretty good. Pretty good here. I finally play g3 because I blocked this. And he follows up with the b6 move here. So this is looking very drawish at this point now. Now, I took on f8. Rick takes f8. Because if he takes with the king, I'm just going to take the file with check. I thought that at this position, I thought he had a lot of pressure. I thought he had a lot of pressure here. You know, not pressure, but just like annoying moves like bishop h3 are coming next. And, and my king is, yes, it's in the center, but it's not like vulnerable. And my bishop is covering too. So I'm like, you know what? I need to remove some of this pressure. I even thought myself maybe bishop h6. So many moves, but let's see. I take on f8 just to remove a little bit of pressure here. Then I played rook to e1. Now my, my intention here is to put this, put this rook on a nice you know, um, file here. And if he plays anything besides like bishop d6, then I can move my bishop and probably take over the file. For instance, like bishop c7 or something. Bishop h6, I'm already immediately threatening to do this. Rook c2, I might go bishop c2 and go here. He also has a check too, but I'm not really worried about the check. I could just block. And that's, that's just more or less a draw anyway, once again. So, bishop d6, I went knight b3. I was, a, I was definitely a fan of him taking this and pawn takes. Now, if you look at this, the more pieces that come off and these kind of... Um, and these kind of positions are in games. When you have in games and pieces start to come off, whose king is more centralized? So I realized this, and I'm like, if I keep getting pieces off, my in game is going to get better for my king. So if I keep trading, because I'm a little bit closer than he is over here. So I, I knew that, and I wanted to try to keep a rook on the board too. Because if I, if the rooks, if we trade everything off, he could, he could get to the center quickly. Two moves. I'm still not that far uh, up the center, but I am closer than he is currently. So... Uh, I knew this and I played knight b3. I also maybe wanted to trade. I wanted to be active and I need to get my piece active Especially when you got a piece on the bench like I like I like basketball and like sports and stuff So I like to think about my pieces as players So this is a, a bench player right now, but this is a strong player. I need to have him in so knight b3 I want to get rid of his strong player so I can get mine to do his thing It was all kind of things here after knight b3 He played knight four and I knew I was like, oh, you might be in trouble because knight a4, like, that's not a move, big fella. That's just, that's, that's not a move. J Bishop KD, Draymond sitting there on B1. Draymond is sitting there like, come on, bro. Put me in, coach. Coach, put me in. Put me in the game. You know how animated he is, so that's funny. That's funny. Bishop to D3 is what I play, actually. No, I play Bishop D4 first. Bishop D4, because I'm cutting off this diagonal. Look at this. So this is my, this is my next plan. If he allows me, at this point, I'm feeling real good. I'm feeling real good with the white pieces because now if I'm allowed, if I get two moves for white, bishop d3 and bishop c4, he is almost checkmated. So I'm feeling really good here. International master, round eight here. I, at this point, I'm like, you know, hey, if I don't win, I'm, I'm not losing this game. That's what I thought. And that's always a good, a good um, psychological point when you play in a game is when you get a comfortable position like this, it's like you should know. I am not going to lose this game. That's not a key to play slow and stuff like that and mess up, you know, or like be overconfident. But um, it is a, a key that you can relax a little bit and actually keep going. Oh. Trying to unleash the Rubenstein bishops. That's right. That's right. So bishop d3, bishop c4 is uh, definitely my plan. He plays bishop f5. And after he played this move, I was like, oh, well, then he didn't took away all the chances now. It's basically a draw now. And I thought this was a very clever and strong move. I thought this was really good. Like, dang, bro. I think the comment saying is you're playing for two results. Yeah, that's right. Win or draw. That's it. We see you, Canty. I see you, chess.com. I see you, chess.com. Chess.com is in the chat. Make sure you guys say what's up. Put some we in here and some lightsabers in the air. But chess.com being in the chat. We see you, too, chess.com. Is this the Keaton Kiera game? Sorry, I'm late to the party. That's right, Texas AU. That's right. That is correct. Yes, this is the Keaton game. Keaton game. So he after he plays bishop f5 in this position, literally, I am just like, this is a draw. So I actually offered him a draw in a better position at this point because honestly, I'm like, hey, I'm the lower rated player. Right after this gift of the sub, the chess.com. Let's go. 25k, 25k says, thanks for the knowledge, James. Thank you so much, bro. 
No problem. No problem. Mr. Popezilla with the Twitch Prime. Let's go, big fella. We in here. Let's put those lightsabers in the air. Thank you. Welcome to the stream. We in here, bro. That's what's up. Bishop at five. So after this is played, I'm literally like, it's over. I'm going to offer it a draw here because, like, I can. I'm in a better position. And this is not like, this is this is going to be a long game. A very long game. And I'm like, you know what? I'll go into the next round. I'll just go into the next round. Four and a half. And get a, a, a pairing and win in the, in the last round. So I played Bishop D3. This is actually what I played because he's going to take. I played Bishop D3 and I offered a draw. And then after Bishop, and what's funny is the the evaluation right now. What do you think the evaluation re reads on the engine? What do you think it reads right now? Black to move right now. What does it read on the engine? Number one move. What does it read? 0.5 minus 0.5 plus 0 0.03 white is slightly better it actually says guys it says 0 0.00 for the number one line this is on stockfish right now depth 20 chess.com all zeros right now all zeros so in this position why did i out for a draw because i know i'm like bro this is like a draw like i don't feel like playing this out and maybe even at the end of the day having like not trying to be clever or messing we've all probably anyone over here watching lurking in the chat talking all the jedi here you've probably lost a drawn game how many times have you lost a drawn game so i'm like you know what this is a draw we either gonna play this out or i i'm i'm already in a slightly better position so it's, it's gonna be hard to mess this up but at the end of the day you know i offer the draw so you play bishop d3 after bishop d3 um the this is this is basically a draw bishop take king takes and if he doesn't i can probably run this way and do some other things so you know we'll see why did not take the bishop well black didn't he didn't he just accepted so sure half a point is worth it in terms of tournament theory for you and ratings wise correct now let's say if the rose was reversed especially actually in this position if i'm playing with the black pieces i probably would still play it out because i'm the higher rated player I am the higher rate player. So this was kind of in a way smart too, because I'm honestly I'm 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 really underrated. My rating is twenty two thirty-three for fee day. And um I got five and a half in the open section out of nine. So usually you're not supposed to do that at a twenty two hundred rating. It happens, whatever. I have to get the rating up. But I know if I'm if I'm the higher rated player, I'm usually not trying to ask for the draw or offer a draw. That's why I know Kyron Griffith in round seven. Round seven, he was very frustrated. You could tell. He was very frustrated because he is the higher rated player. So technically, you know, he loses points from that. He would lose points from that. You know, so I, but for me, I'm like, I'm, I'm basically in this, I think in this game, I'm like a hundred points lower rated than he is. And um, I knew this was a draw. So I was like, well, let's just, let's go for it. He took the draw and I go into the next round. He doesn't want to lose rating points with the draw. Right, you know, so, I mean, he didn't want to lose rating points. He didn't. And I understand. I wouldn't either. You know, I wouldn't either. But I'd rather draw and lose rating points than, like, lose and lose rating, point, rating points. You still get half a point still. So, you still advance. Did he take the draw instantly? No, it wasn't instantly. But he did sit there and think. He went into think mode like this. And I'm sitting here like this. He in think mode. And I'm like, bro, there is nothing else to do. Like, you, you need to accept this or you're going, you might lose this game. So, you know, that's how I felt. And he was like this. And I was like, oh, come on, bro. Like, this is a draw. You know this is a draw. You know this. Or I'm going to win it. Like, you, you, black's certainly not better here. Especially if you look at this kind of move. Bishop takes, king takes. This knight is, I, if, you, if you compare pieces, right? You compare pieces. Look at this. My bishop is absolutely better. My rook is on an open file. Yeah, his is too. But mine's on an open file as well. And my knight is slightly better than his. He don't have many moves. The knight going back here, this might be in trouble. Because after we trade, or maybe maybe king c2, my king gets closer to the center. His is not there. It's not that good. It may be pretty tough. You know, white does have an advantage here. But you could always go with this knight b2 check too. So if I go knight b2, king e4 is like, this is devastating. If I go here, that's just blunder mode. Like you just jump off the deep end head first with a smile all the way down. It's not happening. King here, rook check, that's over. So king c4, I can't go here. King d2, then he just goes back to a4, and then we kind of back in the same position. King c2, same thing. So I was like, you know what? All right, it's a draw. 
Why not play on with this bad night? Because he's he just he could do this. He could do this. And you know what? It, it, you know, at this point, he it, it's just a draw. Check here, back and and back like this. Because I can't do much. Maybe 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 trying to hit this. Maybe trying to hit this. But uh, maybe this could work. I don't know. Rook F8. I I need to get progress. Because you, you, if I can't progress, there's nothing I can do. There's really nothing I can do. I'm really only playing with this piece too. This rook doesn't do much by itself. This bishop is I can't I can't improve this bishop any more than than what it is right now. And this knight is not so close to the center as I think it is. Maybe knight d two, knight d four. So there's still some ideas here, but you know, at the end of the day, I do got some good moves. And I was like, you know what? I am in a better position here. I'm just gonna take the draw. I'm gonna take the draw because I'm I'm on a hot streak right now. And you don't wanna hot, you don't wanna mess that up. So took a draw here and we go into the ninth round. So this is the eighth round right here. Got a draw. His his fide rating is 23, like 70, 80, maybe 90, something like that. I, mean, I thought I don't, I don't remember. He might have been 2400, but I know his USCF was 2491. I was like, dang, bro. Wow. He really up there. But he got 24. He's 2491. Got a draw here. We doing round nine tonight? Yes, we are. Yes, we are doing round nine. Because you're here, if you're in the chat right now, can we update everyone on what happened in round nine? So in round eight, round eight. Okay, round eight. This is round eight right here. I got a draw. Round nine. I win. I win round nine. I destroy round nine. I crushed round nine. I got a full point. Destroyed round nine.